This morning we're at the South Coast Research and Extension Center down in Irvine, California, and I'm with my very good friend Isabel Barkman, who is the curator of the Persimmon Collection here. And today we're going to walk through the Persimmon Collection and try some of the early varieties that are ripe now. So Isabel, what uh, variety do we have here? This is Masugata. It's a male tree, a male blossom, but they produce some good fruit sometimes. Yeah, I can see that this is predominantly male just by the uh, spent flower clusters, but it does seem to produce some fruit and the quality is very, very cinnamony. It's a wonderful piece of fruit. Very sweet and, and it's dark color. Mm -hmm. Delicious. This variety is uh, Izu, Isabel? Yeah, this is Izu, one of the earliest ones. A, uh, a flattened Fuyu type, a non-astringent type. Very nice flavor already, mm -hmm. nice color. The tree's obviously a Good tree, good looking heavy, tree. Heavy bear, good looking tree. A little more compact than some varieties. Real nice backyard selection. Look at that. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah. Now, Isabel, this is one of my uh, very favorite varieties. This is the one that um, the Japanese call Nishimira Wase, and we have a uh, kind of a pet name for it is coffee cake. Coffee cake, and many people like it. In the Red Fruit Grower Master Garden, everybody wants coffee cake. Yeah, everybody wants coffee well, cake. Yeah. It's one of those that as long as it's pollinated and has its cinnamon color, it's non-astringent and it's absolutely delicious early in the mm -hmm. season. If you cut one open and it's bright orange inside and doesn't have that cinnamon color, don't eat it because it, it will be very astringent. But uh, this variety pollinated, one of the nicest persimmons you'll get. Pollinated with what? Well, we're pollinate. We're recommending um, a pollinator uh, of chocolate, and I know here you feel the kernel, the big, big male yeah. tree. Ma yeah. uh, Mas is that Masugata, Masugata is probably your most effective pollinator here. Because yeah. It's closer than the petty. It's a lot of male blossom. Right, right. Predominantly male and blossom. Blue, they bloom about the same time. Mm -hmm. Look at the, the beauty of that one. It's just beautiful. And it's, I right. like this one. That's one of my favorite. The true Fuyu. So this is this is the true Fuyu. It's not a Jiro type. It's not no. any Moto type. It's no. just the one they call true Fuyu. That it came from Japan as a, as a true Fuyu. Came from Japan as true Fuyu. And yeah. this is uh, obviously not quite ripe yet, so we're not no. going to try it. But uh, Sometime in late November, December. Late it's November, right. December. Yeah. It looks like a beautiful yeah. fruit. Very productive tree. Yeah. Okay, this is the Jiro. So this is the Jiro Fuyu. This is the, uh, the one that is probably the most popular persimmon variety in the Western United States right now. Yeah. Obviously here in the collection, you have so many other v varieties of influence for pollination. It's going to be seedy, seedy yeah. but this variety grown in isolation is predominantly seedless, yeah. uh, non-astringent, early ripening, nice flavor, you eat it while it's crunchy. Production wise, for Dave Wilson Nursery anyway, this is probably the, the, the largest number that we grow variety wise. Everybody seems to want Jiro Fuyu seems to be the most adaptable, yeah. compatible to both to, lotus yeah. and khaki rootstock. I so. Think so, yeah, that's easy to graft. Them. Right, easy to graft. Real diverse variety. Mm -hmm. uh, long lived tree. Beautiful tree. So this is a this is a cute little variety. What do we? Maru. Maru. Yeah. Yeah, this is one that we've been growing for a while. Hmm. Yeah. Look at the darkness inside. You Very dark that? color already. Very sweet. Nice variety. Mm -hmm. Now this is the uh, this is the true strain of Hachia, and uh, this is an astringent variety. So we're not going to cut into this and eat it because uh, it would not taste good yet. This variety needs to um, hang on the tree until it gets a little bit of frost, or the variety should be. Uh, picked early and, and frozen, and then you can take it out of uh, the freezer and, and it loses its astringency. But right now it would not be a pleasant flavor, but this is a great variety. This is the one that everybody wants to use for um, persimmon cookies and things later on. And Cake and all that. Absolutely. It has a lot of sugar. So very, very good. typical to have this little bit of a black marking on the, on the sunny side. Uh, real nice variety when it, get, when it gets soft and sure. ripens up. Yeah. Very sweet. Very sweet. So this, this one's easy to recognize, Isabel. Uh -huh. um, this is the, uh, the true uh, old Japanese type of uh, tamopan. 
And uh, I remember this variety from my childhood. My grandmother had a tree of this, and she used to put it in the freezer and uh, serve it to us in a bowl with a spoon. Yep. And it was just get all get all gooey and mushy yeah. and just absolutely delicious. delicious. And yeah. it's one of the first persimmons that I ever had experience to, and it'll always be one of my favorites. Again, it's an astringent variety, and you certainly don't want to eat it off the tree. So it's not a not a crunchy type like nice a like a gyro. Yeah, you want this one when it's real mushy, but absolutely delicious flavor. These are two seedlings that I planted about five years ago and uh, discovering that this one is almost like a chocolate type. And so being that this is a, a germplasm collection, you have a lot of different obscure varieties here. Yeah. And I noticed this row has a lot of different seedlings in it. So these are my babies, these my are, seed. These are things that you have yeah. selected out of the yeah. collection and, and planted yeah. out. I yeah. have planted some seed and then I'll, now I'll trying to graft some of them and uh, mm, this too I really like it because I want to keep them see if this one pollinate this one so these are both your selection yeah well one, this one's this one's very refreshing very nice flavor and this one is dark one too so then I kind of like this one because the birds have been well if it's good enough for the birds it's good enough for me good for us yeah so I'm interested in this one because of that reason. It's like a, like your coffee cake. Mm -hmm. My my seed maybe mm. that one is pollinating this one, so I want to. This one has a little more of a bold flavor, a little bit yeah. more of a of a cinnamon, mm -hmm. you know, uh, flavor to it. Yeah. It's very nice. Well, I think these are definitely um, two varieties that are well worth watching, and yeah. you know, I'm nice nice tree shape and nice uh, nice character too. I'm going to watch that because if we can find something that we can give it the name of Dr. Schroeder, I have to choose one, a good one for him. That's my And um, Dr. Art Schroeder from um, originally uh, UCLA, he was the one that actually brought, the collection brought this here. collection here. And it, this collection was originally at UCLA, is that, yeah. was that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was what it was. Yeah. Well, it's a, uh, it's, it's a wonderful grouping of material and, and I'm really glad that keep, you have it here at Irvine. Trying to keep his memory alive. Mm -hmm. So this is a this is an American persimmon. This is American persimmon, and it's one of our favorite in tea. And we are very happy because we have been eating too many of these. <laughs> it's the wrong flavor. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. This has a very distinctive flavor of like a raisiny rum. Yeah, yeah rum raisin. I, yeah. I, I think th you know this variety used in. Um, in baking maybe with uh, with dates or walnuts or something. What an incredible flavor this would lend. Well, just eat them fresh. Just eat them fresh and make you happy with the rum in there. Mm -hmm. so, so the name of this variety is what? Meter. Meter. Yeah. And it's an, it's an old style American persimmon. Virginiana, yeah. Virginiana, Virginiana. popular on the yeah. East Coast. Yeah. Hmm. We love it. We don't share this fruit with too many people. Yeah. You're very special, Tom. Well, I appreciate that. This is one of my favorite. When I came to start taking care of this collection, this branch was, this tree was heavy all the way in here, and I got underneath and I took beautiful pictures. Of every year, it's so heavy producer. I, I can't believe the fruit load on this tree. This is just a, a phenomenal tree. You and have to eat it soft, and then it could be late, sometime in January. So it's an astringent variety. It'll astringent ripen up later on. And in January, they're really good, but yeah. nothing else. That and this uh, is the last one. I understand that this is a not a named variety, but just a, a um, number. yeah. numbered variety. So this yeah. is one of the varieties that was brought in originally uh, by the USDA yeah. uh, back probably what in the 19 we have no teens or 20s no or 30s yeah. maybe. Yeah. And this is one of the varieties that but Dr. Art Schroeder brought into the collection into too. We don't have any history what what it is. Yeah. Well, this this one definitely. Uh, it's shows some producer. some character. That's I mean, a beautiful tree. There must be there must be five or six hundred pounds of fruit on this tree. At least. At least, yeah. At least, yeah. Well, Isabel, thank you very much. You're it's welcome. always a pleasure to spend time with oh, you. I'm, I'm glad you did. And uh, thank you very much for sharing the collection with us. Anytime.